Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Uh, in this video, I have Vin with me. Uh, so Vin is from the US and he has been relocating to Vietnam a few years ago. So I think it will be a, a good perspective for you to learn a little bit more from someone who has been before living in the US and is now coming to Vietnam and doing business in Vietnam. Uh, so can you maybe introduce you to our audience? Uh, let us know for how long you've been here and what you are working on. Sure. So my name is Vin Ho. I'm originally from Minneapolis, St. Paul in Minnesota in the United States. And about three years ago in 2017, I moved to Asia and first to Thailand uh, for six months and then Da Nang, Vietnam, which is the central coast uh, for about one year. And then in 2019, I moved uh, to Vietnam. In, in terms of your business, you are working uh, as a sourcing agent, right? Someone who's going to uh, take care of the manufacturing process in Vietnam. Uh, can you tell us more why, from your perspective, uh, Vietnam will be your main hub to manufacture product and export? Sure, that's a good question. As you know, with the U.S.-China trade war, uh, prices have gone up in China for exports and manufacturing, so it's more difficult to buy product now in China. So the thinking is the next spot is Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And there's much more opportunity now in Vietnam. The labor is cheaper. And, you know, it's very close to China. And, and in exports, it has lots of different expertise, such as textiles and manufacturing. Uh, wood and furniture and things like that. There were also recently in the beginning of the year a trade agreement right between Europe and uh, Vietnam to kind of reduce all the costs, I mean all the uh, the fees from the, the custom. Uh, is there also something that will uh, of course encourage the, the dynamism and s synergy between Europe and Vietnam? Uh, do you think for the long run it will be also uh, a good way from Vietnam to, uh, to be a, a trade leader and an exporting leader for Europe? Yeah, I think so. I think what I've learned about was about two, year, uh, two months ago was when Vietnam, the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement was signed and ratified. I think there might be a short phase yet that they have to sign off, but it seems to be a lot of potential. Uh, it's the, the biggest trade deal that Europe has signed with Asia, with an Asian country or Southeast Asia, and Vietnam is a part of that. So I think uh, we'll see a lot of opportunity to come. And I think with the barriers uh, going down, it'll be more trade, more investment, more opportunities for uh, travel, uh, manufacturing, and import and export. Uh, I heard that uh, Chinese will still be um, like the leader for everything regarding to electronics. Uh, but either like some specificities that Vietnam is quite already mature about, uh, I don't know, manufacturing woods, uh, manufacturing uh, some specific products that uh, uh, Vietnam can still kind of take a huge part in the, in the global uh, trade and, uh, and manufacturing. Yeah, so I think what's happening is Vietnam is about 15 years behind China, and it's taking a lot of the lower-end manufacturing that China doesn't want to do anymore that's labor-intensive. Uh, it could be from craftsmanship. It could be textiles, sewing. Vietnamese are really good at. And, of course, shoes. You know, Nike and all the biggest brands are in Vietnam. And China's trying to move up the supply chain ladder. They want to specialize in... Uh, now digital types of products, uh, cell phones, um, high tech technology, mm -hmm. 5G. I think that's a higher profile into, um, you know, in terms of more money and more expertise. Whereas in Vietnam, they're letting Vietnam do more of the polluting types of mm -hmm. manufacturing, which could be machinery or tools or things like that. Okay, and so f from your perspective, being in Vietnam today, and let's talk, let's take the projection of the next uh, three years, uh, do you think there is still a lot of opportunities from maybe someone who is having an entrepreneurship mindset, who want to maybe explore the different business of dropshipping, uh, Amazon FBA? Can you talk a little bit about that, about this concept of manufacturing uh, goods in, in uh, Vietnam or in general in Asia and shipping and selling overseas? Yes, from a uh, Amazon FBA perspective, I used to do that, and I had manufacturing in China as well as Vietnam. And the reason why I moved to Vietnam is, is because of that opportunity. 
I see Vietnam as like China 15 years ago. Now China's getting more expensive. Uh, the labor's increased, materials increased, and now the next spot is Vietnam. So there's much opportunity now, I would say, in manufacturing and Amazon FBA. However, there are some challenges with mm -hmm. that. You know, uh, Vietnamese companies, they're not as developed or sophisticated like we've seen in China. You know, in Chinese companies, you can contact them. They have the customer service. They speak English. Uh, they're very good at sales. They're good at follow-up. Whereas in Vietnam, it's a little bit behind the times. Uh, you might run into a problem where someone might not be able to speak a foreign language such as, such as English so well, or just the common business practices might be a little bit different. Uh, you know, whereas in China, they focus on um, like mass scale manufacturing. They've got the Guangzhou Canton Fair. That's very popular. Everything is thought out. They're, they've got experience. They've got logistics. Every, their economy is built on exports the last 15, 20 years. Whereas Vietnam is just starting and there's lots of growing pains right now. Okay, so, so, so can, about that, can you share maybe some tips if someone want to uh, get involved into the Vietnamese manufacturing market? Uh, what's, what's, let's say, the three first things you would uh, advise that person to do? That person, do you think from your perspective, he has to move to Vietnam at least a few weeks to investigate the different markets, go to the factory and really see the product and kind of make relationship with the factory? Do you think is it necessary or, or can we do everything online? What's your perspective about that? I think it's always better to be physically here if you can. Now, you don't have to move here for one or two or five years, but if you can come here one month, two months or even six months, I think it's more advent for you, especially if you're, you want to make that kind of investment. If you really want to do business in Vietnam, you, you want to uh, buy product, you want to cultivate those business relationships, then the more time you spend here, it's going to be better for you. So I think it's very crucial for that. Okay, so let's say you come here, you investigate the market, you 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 um, you try to foresee some potential products, uh, you do some kind of market analysis, and you see if, if the product may be sell sold overseas. Then how it works after in terms of the payment? Can you explain a little bit the workflow from you you enter into a niche, you investigate some product until the product is manufactured and shipped overseas? What was the different part in terms of the quality as well? Okay, can you digest this for us? Yes, I think, again, there's a quality issue in Vietnam. Of course, there's opportunity, but uh, they're a little bit behind the times, and it may not be as sophisticated in their sales, in their manufacturing, and their exports. So uh, right off the bat, you might have problems f from there. Um, in terms of getting projects, uh, products, exported to either Europe or North America. Usually, from my experience, I work with a manufacturer and then they either have a freight forwarding company or I could choose my freight forwarding company. And they're the people that come and pick up my products. Uh, usually it's in a, by container. Uh, usually when you're at this level, you, the most manufacturers require a minimum order of one container usually. So that's kind of a, another kind of hurdle for people to get if they're just starting off or they're a small business. And is it possible to kind of split a container between different um, be between different business owner? Uh, is it something the, the freight company is providing or the minimum, order, it, the minimum order is one container? I think to be um, fair, uh, the easiest way to put it is a container is probably most of the minimum. You might be able to get away in, in China where they're more sophisticated. They can uh, split your uh, shipment. They can uh, go in with another company or another importer. But in Vietnam, I think with the language barrier and just to make things easier, you probably have to be committed for at least the container or maybe you can talk to them and say you want to have a trial. You might be able to, to, to negotiate it down. To answer your other question about the payment, Mm -hmm. So from my experience working with manufacturers here, it has been a, a bank uh, transfer. Uh, that's how we've been able to do the payment. I'm not sure you might be able to do it differently with different manufacturers. Like in China, they might be able to take WeChat payment or some kind of uh, transfer-wise payment. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, in my past, I've always been a, a bank 
transfer from my U.S. bank account into their local uh, Vietnam bank account. That's how we've been able to do business. So in general, you pay upfront around, what, 20%? Uh, usually it's 30% down, and then the rest, the 70% upon the freight forwarder when they come and collect. Okay. So before the freight come to collect, it's better to have done like all the quality check and to be sure uh, the product is like they won't have any default, right? Right. Uh, usually you can hire that out. There are some supply chain and quality control companies uh, you might want to check out. You can just Google or search. For me, I had relationships with these companies and I've been traveling to Vietnam, so I knew them and I would check on them. So it was not a big problem. Uh, but that's one way you can do it. Or I had my manufacturer just send me photos of the finished product and maybe of them uh, putting it on the, uh, the truck so then I know that it's, everything is okay. Okay. So can, can you talk maybe now a bit more about what we are working on currently, Global Trade and your YouTube channel? Sure. Uh, so I have a Global Trade YouTube channel, and the reason why I started it is I wanted to dip in and expose and study a little bit about Asia's history, especially Vietnam since I'm, I'm based here now. And I wanted to talk about technology, the economy, and modern day. And that's kind of what my interest is all about, as well as business. I think mm -hmm. uh, you can't really get away with highlighting Vietnam without talking about the economy these days because things are changing so quickly. So that's kind of my interest is Vietnam, Southeast Asia, and Asia in general, and trying to get that out to the public because a lot of people don't know what's happening on this side of the world, and I wanted to highlight some of that information. Okay. Do you plan to provide any service in the future, either for helping Viet Q to relocate or helping business owners to settle businesses in Vietnam? Or Yeah, so my expertise is in supply chain and manufacturing. So my day job is I do work for a Chinese international company sourcing product in Vietnam. And so I do quality control. I uh, go to factories. I audit them. I coordinate logistics and 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 check up on on products and things like that so if you're out there and you need help with that or assistance i could maybe provide assistance by following up or you can hire me short term or long term on a product project so uh, it just helps out where you have someone you can trust on this side of the world uh, that's part of your team versus you having to travel back and forth all the time Yeah, I think there is uh, anyway good opportunities to investigate what Vietnam can provide. It can be just for an, a young entrepreneur just starting his business. Here, as we mentioned, you have a lot of community, a lot of gathering, so it's very easy to kind of connect between each other. And also in the manufacturing uh, side, I'm pretty sure in the next, I mean, already now, but even in the next five years, we change a lot. So if uh, you guys are into this industry, I'm pretty sure forcing the opportunities here i mean you, you show me some of the products you are you are you are you are you are providing for the us i'm pretty sure even for french people european people uh, there is opportunities in at least uh, coming here sourcing some products and probably get get starting i mean get uh, a business on track by producing here and manufacturing uh, I actually i check some of your video you you really uh, dig into some of the uh, those contents So I invite you guys to check. I will put on all the link in the description. I have also uh, uh, some articles on, on the blog about the different kind of products you can source in Vietnam. It can be either te textile products, just factory in general, and also coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that's the idea also to try to uh, show uh, the, the product w are available in Vietnam uh, for you guys. Um, thanks, Vin, for, for having you uh, here in your in your office with kind of a good setup for, for the video. Um, do you have a last word to say to our audience? I think uh, at Vietnam, Southeast Asia is a great opportunity. I know uh, Guillaume sees the opportunity and he made a commitment to move here and he has great, great services and he's kind of doing the same thing. He wants others to come here too and I think if you have an opportunity, at least come by Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City and Vietnam. I think uh, you'll be delighted and excited about Vietnam and Southeast Asia. Okay, thank you, thank you, Vin, and uh, I see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.